Namaste. So I'm growing into awareness that I need to change my phone for higher picture quality. But I already have a list of things I need to buy and I think an iPhone which probably has the best pictures I just cannot afford right now. So unless some of you want to send me a lot of money, um, I'm going to have to find a compromise and I will at some point. So today we look in this video about uh, do I agree with the Manusmriti? Now the Manusmriti is something that's hotly contested in Tamil Nadu because uh, many of the political leaders have taken the Manusmriti to uh, as the document that uh, shows why we should not follow Hindu religion specifically. Now for a, for a while I was in, in support of, of the opposite camp that no, no, these people are misinterpreting Manusmriti. And uh, so I I, 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 I I sort of gave my own explanation. But today, I think I rem yesterday or a couple of days ago, I removed the video supporting Manusmriti. This is because I actually ended up uh, reading the book uh, Manu, Manu Dharma uh, in, in, in my meditation camp where I was for a month. And I had the time to read a book in that thoroughness. And um, while there were some supporting chap some chapters which were good, the one on the various um, uh, rules to follow for the Brahmins when they follow, follow the, do the different uh, rituals uh, was interesting. And for example, uh, I had invited a lot of people for my grandmother's funeral and I was very upset that not many people landed up. But in the Manusmriti, it's very clear that uh, you should not invite uh, people to visit uh, during the uh, last karma, during the final rite, which is the anti HT, and you know what follows after. So somehow, yeah, I, I kind of like that the subtlety of that. That you know, that's not the time for um, the spirits of the world who who have a body, but the time for the spirits of another world. You know. Uh, so that, uh, that was nice and so like this and then the, uh, it was also quite restricting for the Brahmins and um, it wasn't really uh, particularly praising of them but restrictive of them. In fact, there were parts about where uh, how, which direction the Brahmin guy should face to crap, to take a shit and things like this. So they, it made a life, it seems to me, really clearly he said um, um, rules for the life of a male male brahmin or okay maybe all the brahmins are men and the woman is brahmani or i don't know um and and the part about the kshatriya dharma was also quite good uh, how the king should rule and what what ethics and what integrity is expected and why what kind of punishments to be meted out to thieves how do you practically have a spy network all of that was very interesting to read so the part that got me really annoyed was the part called the mixed caste where they really sort of uh, enforce the uh, caste jati criteria, the Varna criteria primarily and uh, so that got me really quite pissed off and also some of the passages were denigratory for women this was sure that uh, some of the passages were also not uh, helpful for women that in a, for example a passage which said a house in which the woman is unhappy is a house that is heading for a failure so that was uh, nice and that's uh, I, I agree uh, but some of the things like uh, yeah I don't know I don't I didn't write down because it pissed me off too much so um, yeah so on the whole I'm not very happy with Manusmriti meaning I don't give it 100% I give it 50% out of 100 for uh, the the rule book the rules that it lays now let's look at the broader category of what is Manusmriti so Manusmriti is uh, there is there's a rishi called Manu and he is supposed to have written this sort of a, a sastra uh, called uh, Manusmriti. All of the sastras are called Smriti, Smritis that are written down by the rishis. So, for example, the Vedas are called Shruti because they are heard by the rishis and given to us, and they are they are the voice of creation. They don't have they don't have time, but the Smritis are those that are written by human beings. In this case, rishis. And uh, so there were many rishis who wrote down uh, who wrote down rule books about how we should lead Dharma Sastra on how we should lead Dharmic lives. One of them is Manu. So Manu Smriti is one of the many Smritis we have. The other Smritis I'm reading from the book Hindu Dharma, which has a collection of um, 
talks given by the Paramacharya of Kanchi. Manu Parashara Yagyavalkya Gautama Haritayama Vishnu Sanka Likita Brahaspati Daksha Angiras Pracheta Samvarta Achanas Atri Apastamba and Satatapa are 18 sages who master the Vedas and derive smritis from them. So it looks like we have 18 different Dharam Sastras, uh, that is smritis, written by 18 different sages. These works are after them called Manusmriti, Yagyavalkya Smriti, Parashara Smriti, Gautama Smriti, Harita Smriti and so on and so on. So we have 18 Dharma Sastras. Now apart from these 18, there are 18 subsidiary Smritis called Upasmritis and it is customary to include Bhagavad Gita amongst the Smritis. I'll come to the Bhagavad Gita and my opinion about it later. So we have all these 18 different Dharma Sastras that give us uh, Dharmic rules. Now the Paramacharya also goes on to say that there are some uh, we find what we find is in one smriti may not be found in another. So there's differences between one smriti and other. This gives rise to doubts which are sought to be cleared by by works called Dharma Sastra Nibandhanas. Nibandhana. Now these Nibandhanas are the practical rule books uh, that are laid down for different parts of the country. For example, each region follows its own Nibandhana. In the north, it is one authored by Kasinada Upadhyay. In Maharashtra, it is the Mithakshara. That is the, <coughs> the Nibandhana in Maharashtra is called Mithakshara. Mm, in the south, it's called the Vaidyanatha Dikshidiyam. And uh, yeah. So in Ta Tamil Nadu, uh, the Dharma Sastra <coughs> Nibandana or the law book we follow here is called the Vaidyanada Dikshadiyam. So if the politicians in Tamil Nadu actually want to pick a grouse against Hinduism, they must read the Vaidyanada Dikshadiyam and then pick fault at it, not the Manusmriti because that isn't a direct uh, enforcement in Tamil Nadu over the ages. So this is the short uh, talk I had on uh, Manusmriti and what I think about it. Now there is another thing I want to say. I, I think I don't like that was a, uh, Manusmriti 100% because there is some sort of discrimination against some people of uh, women and some people, some caste uh, Varna differentiations. Uh, like it isn't particularly saying, it sometimes says that the Brahmin Varna is to be most respected, that is true too. But it's also not saying one uh, Jati is lower than a Jati. What it's saying is that the Jati shouldn't mix, the Varna shouldn't mix. It's saying the Varna shouldn't mix, not the Jati shouldn't mix. So the Kshatriya is not to bra marry the Brahmin, the Brahmin is not to marry the Vaishya, all of this. So I don't particularly uh, agree with that. So I sort of uh, think that Manusmriti is something that has some dvesha, you know, some sort of aversion to certain things. Which so uh, that's why I, do, I don't I don't agree with it. But then after this book, I was quite upset, and so I read the Bhagavad Gita again, a translation, but a good translation in English. And the Bhagavad Gita satisfied me one hundred percent. So I I think. The Bhagavad Gita is also the Smriti uh, that we can take. It's given directly from Krishna Paramatma. And so I uh, I propose that we hold on to the Bhagavad Gita and uh, because it's it's written like the Paramacharya says, in, in, in it looks like in a, from somebody who has no dvesha, no aversion or no liking to anybody or any particular sort of set of people and so let's take Bhagavad Gita as a Smriti and move on and let's uh, give a pass to Manu Smriti.